Okay. This is a patch called Loop Sync. And what it does is record a master loop and then use that as a clock for subsequent loops, which will be multiples of that original loop. Um, so I'm going to try to walk through the control set pretty quickly. Uh, you have a number of different modes. Uh, you can select those modes by pressing this push button or by holding down the, mo the middle stomp switch and releasing after about half a second. The middle stomp switch also cycles through tracks. Um, and the left and right stomp switch do different things in different modes. Red means recording. The first track is the one that will be used as the master loop, so let's record something into it. Now if I want to, I can overdub. And if I don't like it, I can reset things. Um, the first loop, you can reset them track by track, but the first loop will reset all of the tracks because it's the master loop. Um, let's record another master loop. And once a master loop is recorded, you'll start to see this UI button change colors at a different rate. That's because it's clocked from that master loop and it becomes a sort of metronome. Um, let's move on to another track. So the metronome is important because there are two different ways you can record. And I'm gonna go through both of them. The first one, you can use this as a pre-roll. When it comes back to red, that means recording, and recording will always begin at the beginning of one of the master loops clock cycles. So I'll give an example of that, uh, and I'll purposefully try to avoid timing it very well. There's a counter that keeps track of how many bars you've recorded. It goes up to four. You can exceed that number. Um, that's just what will be visually represented, but it's not a hard limit. Uh, I thought it'd be useful feedback. Um, you know, the limitation is that loopers have a 32 second buffer, so it you know, you can go over four multiples of the master loop, but if the master loop is like, you know, I don't know, eight seconds long, then you can't. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now, let's say I don't like this whole pre-roll thing. I just want to start recording my next track when I press record. Uh, you can do the pre-roll bypass, this button here, and that'll just jump you right into record. It'll screw up this metronome, which will go nuts for a second, and it'll screw up the counter for a little bit too, because it, it doesn't really know what to do. Uh, I'll show you an example. still be timed to the master loop, which is the important part. Um, you just don't have the same feedback. So I'm going to switch modes now. There are four tracks for the monophonic version. There's a stereo version that I'll come back to um, very briefly, but it, it has mostly the same features with fewer tracks, because uh, stereo costs CPU. 
Um, so I'm going to switch modes. Like I said, I could also use this UI button. When I'm in Lime, uh, there are two aspects that I can control. I can mute tracks. And I can also do that from the front panel. This reproduces the same functionality. Uh, there's a level control for each track. So I can do that from a foot switch and select tracks and mute them. I can also reverse tracks. And this will take a second to take effect because it goes into effect at the beginning of one of the master clock cycles to try to keep everything in sync. So it's not immediate. It's uh, delayed until there's another master clock cycle. And like the mutes, I can do that from the front panel uh, as well. So that's the, the lime. I call that, I think, the performance mode. And then we can go into blue. And blue has some very simple global controls that are useful. You can pause the tracks and they'll restart wherever you pause them. I don't have visual feedback for this because the way that it works in conjunction with the next control I'm going to show, uh, the C you gets weird and it's hard to represent when it's paused or unpaused but your ears should be able to tell you that um, so we can also play the tracks back from the beginning with the left stomp switch and in conjunction with pause we can stop our tracks And that's basically it. Um, I did put in a weird mode that I like. Let me change back to record. So you can also change the pitch of, of each track. And I have this record to all switch. What that does is allow you to record one input into all of the buffers. Um, so I'm going to show off why that might be fun to play around with. Uh, let's do. Let's reverse that. Let's reverse that. And we'll keep that normal pitch. So what I've done is I've changed the, the pitch slash speed of all of the of some of the loops and I've reversed some other ones and now when I record something into it There's also a stereo version. Uh, it has three tracks. It does not have the record to all function. Uh, CPU is a real limitation here. Um, but it's it's three tracks. It seems I, I had some freezes earlier. I freed up some CPU. It seems stable now. Um, so you know, let me know what you think. Uh, feedback is welcome. You know, uh, the one thing I'll say is that CPU is an issue. 
So, you know, if you want to suggest features or, or maybe I thought through something poorly or, or whatever, uh, please try to keep CPU in mind, you know, so I, I can't just keep adding things. There has to be something probably taken away to fit in a functionality that, that you might want to advocate for. Um, but, sorry, that was my keyboard. Uh, but I know a lot of people have been looking for patches like this, so this is my take on it. I'm still working on it. I'm still ironing out some, some bugs and issues, uh, but it mostly works the way people mostly want it to work, I think. So I hope you enjoy it and get some use out of it, and thank you.